Welcome, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to the American Printing House for the Blinds webinar, Considerations for Contrast Lighting and Filters. I am going to turn it over to you, Jim. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Sullivan, and I am the Director of Social Enterprise with the American Printing House for the Blind, and I get the opportunity to introduce you all today to one of my partners in crime, along with one of Leanne's partners in crime, Justine Taylor. Justine is coming to us from Louisville, Kentucky. She is uh, the Low Vision Product Lead in our Educational Product Research Group. And I think you guys are all in store for a treat today as Leanne walks us through considerations for contrast lighting and filters in the classroom. Justine, are you ready? Yes, thank you for the introduction, Jim. And thank you all for joining me today for the webinar. We're gonna be talking about contrast lighting and filters. And I just wanna give you a little bit of background and some information about as to why I think these um, settings are so beneficial. Um, the filter settings are not only uh, just beneficial to individuals with low vision, but anyone can benefit from turning on these filter settings and using them on their digital devices each day. As you know, we are experiencing uh, more uh, screen time as we're all working remotely from home and doing distance learning with our students from home. We're all using uh, digital screens more often uh, right now. So I, at the end, towards the end of the presentation, I will demonstrate some of these settings and how to um, do these turn on these filter settings on different devices that are commonly used each day. Um, I am visually impaired. I have an eye condition called Stargardt's. So I use a combination of screen magnification, screen reader, and uh, color, uh, inver inverted color contrast on my computer. And I've started incorporating using these filters on my computer, on my iPhone, and on my iPad. And I personally have noticed a huge difference myself with turning on these filter settings and um, using the filter on my computer. I can get a couple hours of extra work done without experiencing fatigue and eye strain and headaches when I'm using the filter. So like I said, I will demo some of that towards the end of the presentation. I will also try and leave time for questions at the end. We've got Jim and Leanne on the webinar that will help answer questions that are coming in in the chat area. Um, there's also a handout that was sent out so you can follow along and you can uh, use your own devices as I demonstrate and go through. So I will go ahead and get started and talk to you a bit about contrast. So as we all know, having poor contrast can um, be very difficult for individuals with low vision to be able to navigate and see in their environment. Um, so visual clutter can be difficult for individuals with low vision um, to navigate in the classroom or workspace. So, so shall we launch the poll to see what people think? Yes, let's um, do the, the contrast question. <laughs> okay, so. There is a poll of the following, which is important to maximizing contrast for an individual with low vision? For those who can't see the poll, is it reducing visual clutter? Is it organizational skills? <clears throat> is it classroom awareness? Is it advocating for contrast and lighting? Or is it all of the above? What is important to maximizing contrast? for an individual with low vision. Mm -hmm. 
and you guys are really making a difference in this poll. Thank you for all of you that were able to find it. I'll end it. I will share the results of what we got so far. It looks like you have an overwhelming 90% saying all of those are important, Justine. And they are correct. <laughs> um, like I said, visual clutter, reducing that amount of visual clutter is very important. Teaching organizational skills is very important um, for teaching your students that are losing their vision, how to be organized. Um, and areas of the classroom in which the student is going to need to interact need to be visible to that student. Uh, it is important for, for individuals uh, with low vision to learn how to advocate and um, ask for better contrast and lighting options. But first, teachers need to know um, what, you know, some of the, the good lighting and contrast um, options are to demonstrate that to the students. And it's important for uh, the, the student to know how to control their work environments and, and advocate for those needs. Um, so I guess we'll move to the next contrast slide. Um, so having high contrast and good lighting and magnification are three of the most important adaptations for individuals with low vision. Uh, contrast is easy to implement, but it is often, uh, sometimes it's overlooked. So it's as easy and as simple as putting a light color object on a dark background or putting a darker colored object on a light background. Um, so some examples of this, you could, you could use yellow or red tape and you um, could use that to highlight a desk or a door frame to, to the bathroom or some important area that the student's interacting with. You can use bright colored tape to outline a table or put a bright tablecloth on the table um, to, to reduce that visual clutter. Um, you can use a plain solid colored background instead of a busy complex background. Um, so not only can you adjust the contrast in the physical environment, you can also adjust the contrast on digital screens. And you can uh, do this by setting the text contrast to white letters on a black background. And this is going to significantly reduce the amount of glare and light that's emitted from the, the digital screens to reduce eye strain. So I can uh, demonstrate this if you, on the Windows 10 PC is the device I'm using right now. And if I do control Windows C, that is going to change your color contrast on your computer. Justine, do you want your camera shown? Or were you just speaking? Oh, I was just, I'm okay. just speaking. That's okay, I was gonna make sure. Okay. Um, so I'm just demonstrated how you can change the, the, the contrast on the computer screens. So now I think we could do a question about lighting. Sounds good. So, the types of lighting. 
do you, the poll says, do you know what type of lighting is best for the low vision student at home? Do you know what type of lighting is best for the low vision student at home? We don't know who you are, so don't worry if you say yes or no. Do you know what type of lighting is best for the low vision student at home? We have a good amount of you who have answered, so I am going to stop and share. Let's see what people think. So, you are in the right session at the moment. We've got a good portion, 63% who are saying, no, they're not quite sure what the best type of lighting for a low vision student is at, that, at their home. So this is a great place to be. Great. Um, so I will talk to you a little bit about LED lighting. So incandescent and CFL bulbs, um, are being replaced by LED lighting. Uh, this is mainly due to, uh, because they're more energy efficient and they last longer and they generate very little heat and then are in most of our electronics today. So incandescents have been phasing out since 2011 and fluorescent lights that are blue in color make objects look bluer and they can cause the eye strain and the headaches. So warmer color lamps make objects appear and look more natural. So LEDs are available and come in all of the color temperatures across the warm to cool color temperature uh, spectrum. So it's important to play close attention to, to what you're, you're purchasing or what you're using in your home or in your classroom. Um, so individuals with a visual impairment, they need four times the amount of light to obtain the same clarity as the normal eye. Um, so some more facts about about lighting. Uh, light is measured by wavelength in nanometers and color temperature is the color appearance of LED light. Um, and correlated color temperature um, is measured by degrees Kelvin. So you're going to want to check the the information on packaging when you're purchasing LED bulbs. Uh, so you can see there's an example here of a, of a label that comes on LED bulb packaging. And you're gonna wanna look for a color temperature, which is the Kelvin number, and it's usually represented by an abbreviated CCT, which is that correlated color temperature, or a K, which is the, the Kelvins. Um, so the most common color temperatures found in stores that you can go to any store and find when you're looking through the light bulb aisle and you see the LED bulbs, um, you're gonna commonly see the 2700K or, and all the way through 6500K. So the lower the number, the warmer the color temperature. And the higher the number, the bluer the color temperature is gonna be. And I think we had another question about that. And I probably gave it away because I didn't pause and let the poll come through. <laughs> so I apologize. Well, let's see who was listening. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How do you measure color temperature again? Is it Kelvin, Celsius, Fahrenheit, or a flux capacitor? <laughs> let's see who is paying attention. 
How do you measure color temperature? And I'm going to end it. Thank you for those that got into that poll. And we have lots of good listeners. We have Calvin at 98%. And that little 1% for that flux capacitor must love <laughs> back to the future. Okay, shall we move on, Justine? Yes. Um, now, do you want me to do the blue slide question before we move on? Uh, sure. Blue light one. Okay. So before we give the answer away, do you, why do you want to reduce blue light? Is it because it gives too much energy? Is it because it reduces brain cells? Is it because it makes you thirsty? Or is it because it causes fatigue? Why do you want to reduce blue light? Give it a few more minutes to let those last minute people vote. And we've got almost all of you voting. Great work. I'm going to end the poll, share the results. A good portion are saying because it causes fatigue, 92%. We've got 8% that are saying it gives too much energy. So, Justine, on to blue light. Okay. Well, I'm going to I'm going to talk a little bit more about um though those those labels when you're you're purchasing and looking at those led bulbs i pop back uh, for you so like i said it can be represented uh sometimes it will be represented with a k but sometimes it's not and it can get kind of confusing if you're not sure um what these terms mean so i wanted to point them out um so the color temperature is like, um, you know now, is represented in Kelvins, but they, they may use words like daylight, full spectrum lighting, warm, cool, or white. Um, and these terms um, can be represented to, to mean different lighting temperatures. So if you're not sure, uh, you know, what they mean, it can be a little confusing. So just so you know, daylight and cool or white, if it says that on the packaging, um, this is typically in the 5,500 Kelvin range. So um, as, as I mentioned, the higher that number, it's going to look bluer, okay? Uh, so full spectrum lighting ranges from 6,100 degrees or higher. So that's really in that cool um, part of the spectrum and it's gonna look very blue. So if you don't like blue lights and you want uh, to have a warmer color, um, you're gonna wanna look for a lower uh, number, okay? Justine, do you recommend letting students identify their preferred color temperature? Yes. And okay. we'll, get, we'll get to that. And then one more. Is there a recommendation sheet for specific eye conditions? Hmm. Not that I know of. Okay. Well, that's a good <laughs> question. Helpful, wouldn't it? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, because it's, it's very individualized. Okay. And and lighting preferences are different and it's different for different tasks that you're doing. Um, so that's why I later on I'll, um, I'll kind of recommend the variable lighting um, options because they provide more lighting options for the user. Um, right. So the warm white is typically uh, so when it, if it says warm on the packaging um, or warm whites, this is typically in the 3,000 to 4,000 Kelvin range. So um, if you like the warmer color lighting, uh, then you're going to want to look for the 2,700 to 3,500 Kelvins. 
that's a good range uh, to look for if you like the warm color. Uh, so wearing filter lenses uh, during the exposure of blue color in the blue color temperatures, um, such as under fluorescent lighting, uh, this is going to filter out that blue light. So blue blocking lenses are usually yellow or amber in color. Um, and so we're going to talk a little bit about watts and lumens here. Um, so Watts, that's sort of an old kind of thing that was used with incandescent bulbs. And uh, watts is the measure of energy used. And LED bulbs typically consume uh, between just 8 and 13 watts of energy. So um, it's more common now and makes more sense if you uh, purchase lumens rather than watts because lumens is the measure of brightness. So um, if you want a brighter bulb, it's again into those numbers, um, you're going to want a higher lumen number um, and the lower uh, lumens is going to be a dimmer bulb. Um, color accuracy is the measure, uh, is measured by co co color rendering index, so CRI. Um, and that ranges from 0 to 100. And the higher the number, the better bulb is for the human eye to see detail and color. So the Lighting Research Institute recommends using lamps in the range of 2700 to 3500 kelvins and a CRI of at least 80. And again, that CRI um, is the color rendering index and that determines how um, accurate of the, the color appearance under the specific light. So now we're going to talk a bit about um, smart bulbs and smart bulbs. Do we have a question about this, Leanne? I do not see one about smart bulbs. Oh, okay. Um, just making sure. <laughs> <laughs> so smart bulbs are another option and they're becoming more affordable and uh, better quality. And there, there are many options for smart bulbs. And you can find them in regular stores, um, you know, Costco, Target, Home Depot, they all have, um, you know, smart bulbs available on Amazon. And this is another variable lighting option. Um, and they're, they're done on Wi-Fi, so the bulb is connected by the Wi-Fi, and you control it with an app on your phone. And I've found um, just researching in my own research about smart bulbs is they have different colors and they can do really cool things. Um, you can set them to, to, you know, if you wanted more of a, a daylight color during the day and then they can switch to warmer colors in the evening. Um, but the, the lumens I couldn't find a very bright um, lumen if if you're looking for the the colored bulbs, um, but the the white bulbs they do have a range of options for those. 
Um, so I, I will give you some more information about smart bulbs. Um, and after the presentation, we'll send out some additional resources um, for these things that I, I don't have um, much time to get into. But um, the next thing I wanted to talk to you about where it was a, a blue light tester kit. And this is something I found it's available on Amazon for $20. And it basically is a tester kit um, that will help test if you're blue light sensitive. Um, so filters block out the, the blue light from lighting. And the tester kit, it comes with eight filters and a pair of glasses and you put the filters in the glasses and there's different color tints and you can try them out and you can it helps determine which filter is going to work best for for your eyes and this is a better method than the buy and try um, kind of thing I've done that before where I've bought several different filter glasses and turns out that they didn't help me all that much and I was out $50. So I really liked this tester kit because it gave me a way to try all the different colors and tints and different options before I went ahead and purchased a filter for myself. Um, so again, we will send the resources out for this it comes with a great article um, it's by a company in the uk called glare mini and they have an article that breaks it down really well um, they explain you know which uh, filter what it does how much um, light blue light is filtered out um, and it gives a, a comparison list of filters that can be purchased that will match the filter uh, the test filter. Um, and another, another tool that's used to help um, during a lighting assessment is Lux IQ. And I will also will send out the link to this um, resource and it has a video that you can watch. And it's a lighting assessment tool and it basically um, helps the, the user determine what light task lighting is going to be the best and what light um, color filter is going to be the best. And this tool is mainly used by practitioners. So it's something you may want to ask for during a low vision exam and find out, you know, do they offer this lighting assessment? Um, but it is, a, it, is a, it is a tool that can be purchased um, and used to help determine the, the, light, the best lighting for the student. Um, so, okay, that's my spiel on the, the filter test kit. And, so before you go to the next uh, topic, we had a question. Oh, okay, great. About settings for devices. So I have, we have a question for you about settings for devices. Which device does not have a built-in filter setting? Is it a television, a computer, a phone, or a tablet? Which device does not have a built-in filter setting? You guys have found the polls. Getting everybody in. You guys are doing a great job. So which one does not have built-in filter settings? 
Okay, I'm going to end it and let's see what we have. We have 88% that say the television doesn't have it. 3% say a computer. 6% say a phone and 3% say a tablet. So out of the ones you're going to talk about, Justine, which one does not have a built-in filter setting? So I have moved you over to your contrast and filter settings. Okay, I will demonstrate this. Um, and we'll talk about, we'll talk a bit about each device and what is offered. But to, to answer your question, they were, most were correct, it's televisions. Okay. It's the built-in setting. You would think so. I, um, initially when I went through, I was like, hey, all these devices have settings that are built in. Does my smart TV? And it didn't, but we'll talk about um, third party options for that one. Um, I just wanted to back up for a second about blue light. Um, so some individuals are affected more by blue light than others. Um, blue light can cause some individuals to crave carbohydrates and sugar. And it can also cause individuals to lose concentration and have trouble sleeping at night. So that's why um, it's important, uh, not necessarily to have the filters um, on all the time, but it's really becomes important to have that filter on um, before you go to sleep at night. Uh, but for me personally, having the filter on all the time on my computer is very helpful. Um, but some people, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if the filter's on or not, but most people, they're going to see a difference when they're having a lot of exposure on the computer or on, you know, devices as we all are these days, we get all of our, you know, news and books and podcasts and, um, schoolwork and, everything is on computers and on a, a ta on a screen. Um, so I noticed a big difference when I turned the filters on and they, they really helped reduce the eye strain. Um, and like I said, I will demonstrate these so it'll make more sense. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you, I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you how to set these settings on the computer screen. Um, so Leanne, am I able to share my Yep, right now I just see your name, so I'm just waiting for you. Okay, I'm... Hmm. Oh, I'm seeing some, the poll here, let's see. I was gonna say there's a small X on the top that you can close the poll for yourself. Yes, I got it. Um, okay, so I'm going to share my screen. You are sharing your screen. Okay. Um, so I'm going to turn on JAWS. JAWS Student Edition. Start screen share. And I'm going to hit Windows X is going to open up my settings. Windows X, context menu, apps and features. To navigate, press up or down arrow. F, desktop, D, shut down or sign out submenu. U, run, R, search, 
S and file explorer E settings I'm gonna go N, to task manager T win leaving menus settings search box find a setting edit type in text and then I'm gonna go to display system list box selected display one of 14 and if you tab through here you'll see the options tab display tab about. identify button tab detect button tab change brightness for the built-in display left tab night light on until 7 o'clock p.m. button okay, on night light. to activate press space bar so the settings on a Windows 10 PC is called night light and like I said you can all of the devices have built-in settings that you can turn on um, and this basically adjusts the the color of your screen to be in the warmer color temperature um, so if you turn that on and if you go to night light settings night light settings is where night light settings link home button to activate press space bar um, that is where you can adjust the schedule tab turn off now button tab strength left tab schedule schedule night light button on to activate prep tab sunset to sunrise radio button not checked so to change the selection press you can have this set to be just sunset to sunrise or you can set a customized schedule and you can have it on during certain parts of the day or all day. I have mine set to 7 a.m. to 7 uh, p.m. Um, so I have my filter on right now all the time. Um, and this is the slider scale. Um, Strength left right slider, 66. So I guess to increase or decrease use the arrow keys. 66% and if you drag this sliding scale the the lower it goes the blue alert the screen is going to from Allison Zoki to all um so as i'm dragging this scale across and it is percentage is being uh, blocking more percentage of the, the blue light emitted from my screen. As it goes, it, it's just like a f uh, the filter, you know, eyewear filters. Alert. Um, you've got, from it goes from blue, it goes from bluer, um, and then it will go yellow, orange, or like an amber color, orange. Alert. It'll go red. Three particular. Um, so you have this scale alert and adjust Lisa alert two participants raised hand okay so um, that alert how you set the three participants on the computer alert Kathleen Jack has alert and now I'm gonna show alert you. from Karen Hudak to all panelists it's hard to see the computer contrast adjustments on Justine's screen because of the contrast settings. Yes. Um, Alert. I'm, I'm sorry. From Carl. Can't see the colors um, changing on the Alert. screen. Three per Alert. Alert. Present this. Three per with and connect my screen to the projector uh, when I do this uh, normally. Alert. You can't see the colors Four. changing. Alert. But if you Four along on your device, you'll be able to see that color change of your screen um, and like I said I was describing how as you and the more you use the filter you'll see that it's it's very blue after you've used the filter for a while um, just like any getting used to any new tool that you're using it takes uh, time to adjust to it and get used to using it but after you use it for a while um, you'll notice that if you if it turns off at, for any reason or you 
you bring it back down to the the lower um, percent alert you'll notice that it's very blue um, so as you drag it it will go from yellow my screen is more like yellow amber orange red alert okay so Craig that's on the computer alert. screen and now i'm alert show you from lisa how to do this on an android phone so we're, right, as we're doing that i think leanne i think we want to throw out a question to the group right? yes yes yeah. And okay. Justine, just a time check, we're at 12.45, so we got about 15 minutes. Okay, thank you. Corton, D, enter. Okay. Here, go ahead. Press right well, to switch to you. Well, she is getting set up. I am curious about how you actually heard about this webinar. We've been posting them on our website, and we know enter. that it's being shared on social media. Um, I am registering it. Enter with ACVREP, but we also know word of mouth travels fast. Com. So we are just interested to know how you actually heard about this webinar. OSD, folder view list view. It's been interesting to note that a majority of you actually registered within the last four days of Alert. this webinar. From Denise Garabito to all, enter. <laughs> Uh, Justine, do you want to mute for a second? <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. Just... JAWS is very noisy in uh, a webinar situation in Zoom, and it's one of those things that as uh, teachers of the visually impaired, when you're working with your students, if they are being forced into a setting, you can see just how much um, sound overload they might be getting in their session. So I am going to end this poll and let you know. This is this is the results. Where, where, where do people for this webinar heard. We had a, a group of you, 32% of the APH website, but 41%, it was word of mouth. And I think that's typical with our field. We see a lot of word of mouth sharing with uh, when we find out something about it. So a certificate of completion is given uh, for the live webinar and so that will be done if you will send the opening and closing codes, but that is for the live webinar. Okay. You ready to go, Justine? Uh, yeah, so I've, I am sharing my um, Samsung Android phone screen. And all you have to do is go into settings and you go to display. And on the, the Android phone, it's called blue light filter. So I'm gonna have to, here it is. So you tap on blue light filter and you just turn that on. And just like the computer, you can set a customized schedule or you can just have it on sun, sunrise to sunset. Um, and it does the same exact thing. Um, it just adjusts uh, the, the amount of blue light being emitted on the, the screen. So you can adjust this to the warmer end of the spectrum or the cooler end of the spectrum. And it has the same slider and as you go back and have less of the blue light being blocked, it's bluer. As you drag it to the warmer end of the scale, it gets very um, yellow, um, orange color tint of the screen. So these settings are very easy um, to set and they are on most devices. Uh, they are in the same location. They're just called different things. Um, they're all gonna be in the display settings. So that is on the Android phone. It's called the blue light filter. Um, so I will- Is a Samsung phone and Android? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, 
I'm going to, while you're doing that, Justine, I'm going to display the um, screen really fast of the settings for Android that was in your presentation. So we do have in the presentation the settings for the Android and kind of a step-by-step -step follow through. So if you want to go back and listen to the recording, you can also review that and you will get the presentation afterward. And then the last one is the um, settings for the iOS. And Justine, you tell me when you're ready and I will stop sharing. You can probably, we could probably do another question, Lee, unless she's doing that if we okay. needed to. Oh, I'm trying to find one. There we go. <laughs> oh, I found one. Uh, let's see if, if you were paying attention. Do you remember which of the following color temperatures is recommended to be the best lighting for low vision? Accessing prior memory. Whoops, it hit. I'm going to relaunch that. That actually hit. I almost hit it shut. Sorry about that. Do you remember which of the following color temperatures is recommended to be best for lighting for low vision? 7000K, 6500K, 5500K, or 2700 to 3500K? Okay, and we'll display the results. We have 73% say it's the range between 2700 and 3500 K. 13% are at 5500, 10% at 6500, and 3% at 7000, Justine. Um, yes, so the 2700 to 3500 K is the correct answer. Okay, I have stopped sharing my screen, it's all yours. Um, well, is it bouncing over to your iOS device? It is not. Um, it's saying that the plugin needs to be installed. Oh, well, our typical technology. <laughs> so it uh, sounds like we might need a, 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 a times two. Uh, what I'll do instead for you, Justine, is I will share again the slide that had the iOS and we have another slide that has the Mac filter settings for that but we only have eight minutes left so I want to at least finish that for you so you can get to a few of the questions that have come in so it, it always remains to be seen that we seem to be running out and you guys have great questions in here um, um, yeah I apologize I'm not sure why the iOS <laughs> It's not um, working. Well, we're, we're going to have a times two. That's okay. We're going to do our second uh, a, a, a times two to be able to do that. You also had information regarding contrast and filters for TVs. I did. Um, so let me let me just recap that really quickly. Um, so. I showed you how to set on the, the PC. Um, and again, on the iOS device, it's, it's the same as the Mac. Um, so that's going to, um, I'll give you the settings for both of those. Um, and it's in the, it's in the handout. So on a Mac, you open up system preferences and you go to display. Like I said, it's always in the display settings and it's called night shift on the iOS and on the Mac, it's called night shift. And um, you just go in and just like on the computer I showed you and on the Android, um, you turn on that filter and you can adjust um, on the scale what 
color you want it to look like, and you can set that um, for a schedule. So that's for the Mac and the iOS devices. TV screens are a little um, different. Um, you can go into the menu settings on a TV screen and you can adjust the, the display and the picture settings uh, to control the brightness, but you can't do a filter on the smart TVs like you can with all the other devices. So um, TVs don't have that setting. So an alternative you can use is called Drift TV. And you can buy this, uh, again, you can buy it on Amazon and connect it to your TV and it transitions the, the television screen to apply a warmer color filter um, that you can adjust to brighter during the day and it will automatically shift to the warmer color at night. Um, and it's gonna emit that le less of a blue light after dark um, to help individuals with sleeping. Um, and I think it's around $124 on Amazon. And so that's a third party um, kind of plug in play alternative device you can purchase for a TV screen. Um, so does anyone have any questions about um, these settings or anything about the presentation? There were. There was a question regarding the uh, students who might use Chromebooks. Uh, are those directions similar? Um, I figured I was going to get a Chromebook question. Um, I, de I didn't go over those, those settings because I, I, I just don't use a Chromebook for my work. But I know a lot of students use them in the classroom. And I would imagine that they have similar settings. I would check in the, the settings options and I would go into the display area and see if they have some sort of filter. Okay. And then uh, is there a way to change the filters and lighting on a gaming console? Um, so that Drift TV in my presentation, I have all a resource page and I have all of the resources hyperlinked and you can click on them and one of my resources is the Drift TV and it shows um, a gamer that he he got the Drift TV to use on his television for gaming because he was up at night gaming and he wanted to have that filter on. Okay. And then when doing a lighting assessment, do you do that with um, a person, a person when you fit it over their lenses, like if they have noir on? Oh, like an eyewear filter? Yes. What, what about it? Can it says, it? Um, when doing a lighting assessment, do you do so with fit over lenses? Um, not typically. I mean, you can. Okay. Um, like if you are doing a lighting assessment or an, a fil you know, an eyewear filter assessment to see what filter will work best, you typically do that indoor and then outdoor as well. Okay. And what app do you recommend for the smart bulb? Um, it depends on what smart bulb you purchase. I know um, Philips Hue has their own app called um, Hue, I think. Um, and it's, it's an app that controls the smart bulb, but it just depends on which bulb you purchase and it will, it'll tell you what, what, which app you would need to control it. Okay, some students have issues with the bulb under their video magnifier screen. Um, while they can adjust brightness and contrast to fit their comfort levels, the bulb brightness continues to bother them. Do you have suggestions? Um, the only thing I would maybe suggest is, um, like was mentioned earlier, you could put on an actual 
eyeglasses uh, filter at that point. Um, if you want to, if you want to bring up the slide really quick with our products, um, okay. we can show you some of the products that we have. Um, they the are up. Oh, okay, great. Um, the ultra lens and the topaz filter are two of the eye uh, glass filters that we, the eyewear filters that we offer. Um, and one is yellow and one is in amber color. And <clears throat> they come in all the, the different sizes. And they come in an infant size, a junior size, and an adult size. Um, and you could maybe put something um, for the student to wear, physically a filter to wear at that point. Um, we also have um, sorry, my screen has... Well, that's okay. I'm going to move forward with sharing your contact information, and yeah. they are more than willing to get in touch with you. I'm sure you'll answer all those questions. And then we also yeah. have resources in this PowerPoint. We'll go out to you uh, uh, by tomorrow afternoon, you will be getting a email and a follow-up email from all of us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing. And I am going to say thank you everyone for attending and we hope to see you again soon. I am going to say thank you to Justine for a wonderful presentation thank and you. we will have another session at another point.